you want to be respectful uh, to the answer that you get. So that's why you call this to be the Taylor series because you use his formula. Okay, first of all, I just want you guys to think back, all the way back to the very first time that you guys did brackets. And maybe you had to work out a question such as one half plus one third. And what do you guys think that? What's the most common answer that people will give if this is the very first time that they're doing fractions? Yes, they will just say the answer should be 2 over 5 because it seems legit. 1 plus 1 is 2, and then 2 plus 3 is 5. But of course, as we all know, this right here is not correct unless you have a circle right here. But let's not talk about that. Anyway, to add fractions, legitimately, you have to get the common denominator and all that. And I just want to tell you guys, it's not easy to add fractions. Right? You can ask like a third grade kid, they will tell you, I don't like to add fractions. Well, anyway, let me tell you guys that. Decimals came much later than fractions, right? And if you are willing to take the time to change one half to decimal, and of course, we all know this right here was just 0 0.5, and for one third, it's not so easy. Well, because you actually get 0 0.333, it keeps on going forever. So this right here, the decimal version is not so easy. But if you're willing to look at the decimal versions of the same question, and if you add this up instead, this is so much easier because you can just add them term by term. Yes, I should have said by looking at the uh, place value, but you guys will see why I use the word term by term. Anyway, for this right here, just add 0 and 0, of course, and then this and that, which is 8, and then this is 0 and 3, and then so on. This right here is definitely one of the legitimate ways to answer that question, right? So, decimals are much better. And why am I telling you guys this? Well, as I said, decimals are much better, but it's not easy to get the decimal expansions of some uh, bad numbers or complicated numbers. Why not? Imagine if you have to do e plus square root of 2. Ah, you have to figure out what e is, and then you have to figure out what square root of 2 is for decimal. It's not so easy. But I do have some videos on these numbers already, so you guys can check that out. Anyway, this is still a calculus video. The uh, idea is the following. What if today I want you guys to add two functions, maybe e to the x? This is a common function that we have to talk about in calculus, of course. And then let's add another one, 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, e to the x plus 1 over 1 minus x. I cannot do anything. Maybe get a common denominator and all that, but uh, yeah, that's about all. Well, maybe e to the x plus sine x. Then in that case, I seriously cannot even do the common denominator, right? However, if you're willing to take these two functions and change them to polynomials, then you'll see. Let me just tell you guys the answers first. They both keep on going forever. They do not end. That's why it's the infinite polynomial. So it's like same idea of the one third. It keeps on going forever. And it depends on how many terms that you use, and of course, more accurate answer will be, right? And if you look at this right here, wouldn't it be so much easier to add them up? Yes, because now we can just add them term by term. 1 plus 1 is 2. Yes, I know. And then x plus x is 2x, and plus, okay, 2 factorial means 2 times 1, which is 2, and this is in the denominator, so we have 1 half. We have to do 1 half plus 1, and you have to add the fractions legitimately. 1 half plus 1 is 3 half, and you keep the same term, x squared. And then 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, and this is 1 over 6 plus 1, which is 7 over 6, x to the third power plus dot dot dot. Guess what? This right here will be a pretty good answer for this, if you want to add them up. Of course, I have to tell you guys more things, such as what we call the radius of convergence, and how exactly can we come with this, right? Anyway, here is the idea. Our goal is to write a rather complicated function, and we'll just write it as f of x, and this right here is what we call the power series. And you have two main ways to get the power series, right? Especially in Calc 2. One is to use your best friend, right? And two, this right here, 
is called the Taylor series, the Taylor formula. And when you use the Taylor formula, of course, you want to be respectful uh, to the answer that you get. So that's why you call this to be the Taylor series, because you use his formula. And I personally call this the dad if you are talking about the series. Anyway, let me write this down right here for you guys. First of all, our goal is to write f of x as an infinite polynomial, as a power series like this. And I will write this down in the summation form. This is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And the main goal is to figure out the coefficients. So I will just put down cn right here. This is the coefficient sequence. And then you have to write down x minus some number a raised to the nth power. Well, what is a? a is what we call the center. So it's almost like the starting. It's your target number, all that stuff. I will show you guys more later on with pictures. But I will tell you guys how to work out the cn first. Well, right here, in fact, let me just write down the expanded version of this expression for you guys. All right, our goal is to figure out the c's. How can we do it? Well, you have a constant. How can you kill a constant? Yes, by integration. No, sorry, just kidding. By differentiations. So what we'll do is differentiate this one time. And in that case, you'll see that c0 will be gone, right? And when you differentiate this part, well, you just get the constant c1. The derivative of this is just 1, so you just have c1. And then when you differentiate this right here, you bring the 2 to the front, don't forget about that. And then you have c2. And you minus 1, so you get c, you get x minus a to the first power. And you do the same thing. Bring the 3 to the front, 3 c3, x minus a to the second power, and then bring the 4 to the front, so you have 4 c4, x minus a to the third power, and so on, so on, so on. So that's cool. And now, let's just, just differentiate again. Well, let's do it again. Let's look at the third derivative, namely the jerk of that. No, just kidding. Let's see. Hey, I see this is x minus a to the first power. And you have more x minus a terms later on, right? Because you can see that this is x minus a to the first power. And the next term, you have x minus a to the second power. So a small number to use is that we can just plug in a for x. So I will just tell you guys, notice if you put a into x. Well, this right here is just a constant term, so this right here stays, which is 3 times 2 times 1 times c3. And this right here is going to be plus 4 times 3 times 2 times c4. x, which is the a now, but we are minusing the a to the first power. And then this right here is actually a done deal because it's just a 0. And in fact, all of them, they all have a minus a to some power. So everybody right here will be 0. So if you look at the third derivative of a, it's just this. So how can we solve for c3? We can just divide it by 3 times 2 times 1 here. So in another word, note, c3 is just the third derivative of the function, and you have to put a into it, and then divide it by 3 times 2 times 1. We can nicely write here as 3 factorial. Well, well, in fact, we can generalize, generalize this. The idea is that cn is equal to, you just have to differentiate n times. And in notation, we'll write it as f with a parenthesis n. This means the nth derivative of the function. And then you are going to put a into it. And then you are going to divide it by n factorial. That's it, right? And perhaps I will just tell you guys uh, this right here for you guys. Note, the zeroth derivative of the function at a, this right here is just f of a. Like, the zeroth derivative is just the original function by convention. So this right here is the coefficient formula, thanks to Taylor. And if you use this, you can get the Taylor series. I have a video on this already. You guys can go check that out. This right here, you can also use the Taylor formula to work that out, but you don't have to. But I will also have the links for you guys. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. Coming up next, four-year series. Anyway, as always, that's it. Oh, 
be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Yeah.